So hello everyone. We started the day in outer space and we are going to end the day in outer space. Pretty cool, right? Yeah, there we go. How many of you have seen this photo before? Lots, right? So it was taken by the Apollo 8 astronauts over 45 years ago. And many people credit this photo, in part, with sparking the environmental movement. Why? Why was it a spark? It's because it highlights how the Earth is fragile, and it highlights how the Earth is special. This world teeming with life, with oceans, with weather. Why did our planet come to be this way, but other planets did not? They're dull, they're lifeless like the moon. So fortunately, as a planetary geologist, my students and I get to think about this question. And we think about it in part, how do planets work? How do they sustain life through time? We think about this in the context of thinking about other planets too, like Mars. So who knows that Mars today is really cold and really dry? Yeah, yeah, a few Marsophiles. Well, well, it is. The temperature only barely gets above freezing, and the lowest temperatures are over 100 degrees below zero. But this picture shows that Mars probably once had liquid water, and it probably once had an ocean. This is a topographic map of Mars, and we're peering down into the northern lowlands. We've learned over the last decade of exploration that actually during the first billion years of its history, Mars had rivers and lakes. It had soil forming from water trickling through the rocks. There were hydrothermal systems circulating in the subsurface. And there were, there were lakes that evaporated and left behind a bathtub ring of salts. So what happened to Mars? Why did this once water-rich planet transition into the cold and dry world that we see today? And could there possibly have ever been life that formed during that first water-rich period. So we get a few shots to go down to the ground and explore these questions. So this is Gale Crater, and some of you may know that this is the current home of the Curiosity rover. Gale Crater is 150 kilometers, and it has a mountain in it that's taller than the tallest mountain in the continental United States. So we wanted to go, and we wanted to go to this crater because we wanted to look at the record of its rocks. So when you think about the Grand Canyon, right, you think about layers of rocks, and you know that geologists like the Grand Canyon. You might like the Grand Canyon. But we like it as geologists so much because each layer of those rocks records a history of the environment that was once there. So you, as you hike down the Grand Canyon, you're hiking older in time. You're reading the record from the rocks. Similarly, this is what we can do at Gale Crater, except in this direction, we're going up. We're starting with the oldest rocks. We're working our way up, up through them to see what they tell us. Here's another close-up view, the closest we were able to get from orbit, and you can see these ledges. Each of these rock layers has a particular story to tell us. Now, you might remember, two years ago. Did any of you watch the landing on, uh, on, tel on, uh, on the web, streaming it? Yeah, a few of you out there. That was pretty awesome, right? So the triumph of engineering, the team at JPL, the engineering team landed a one-ton rover on the surface of Mars. And if you haven't seen the web video, I encourage you to Google seven minutes of terror and watch how they did it. But for those of us scientists in the room, it was now time to get to work, because once we landed, our destination was in front of us, Mount Sharp the mountain we were going to climb to determine the environmental history of Mars. And it was beautiful from the surface. So this is a postcard. It is an image taken from the surface of Mars by the rover. And you can see the beautiful rock layers in the mountain ahead of us for exploration. Now, there was a long journey ahead of us, though, before we would get to those rock layers, because where we landed up there, we had to actually go around a pile of sand dunes that were really, really high, like, like way above my head high, that would cause the rover to fall over if the rover tried to drive over them. So we had about a 15-kilometer trek ahead of us. 
When we landed, it was kind of cool because we have orbiters around Mars too, and we could see exactly where we had landed, which was in the middle of that black spot. And then we could see all the pieces that delivered us to the surface, the heat shield, the back shell, the parachute. And we could also see that our landing had blown away the dust to reveal rocks just around the rover. Now, if anyone in the room thinks about geology or is, is, is curious about what's going on, your, your attention might immediately be drawn right here to this contact between three different units of rocks. What that says, there's three different environments there to explore. So even though Mount Sharp, to go there to start our 15-kilometer drive, we're supposed to go south. Which way did the rover go? Yeah, the rover went there. We wanted to check out these, these cool light-tone layered rocks, and it was, it's been an amazing journey ever since the last two years. So we started out by checking out those patches where our rockets that had delivered us to the surface blew away the dust. So we went to the, the, the one over to the left, and what we saw when we got there were these crumbly rocks that looked like they were cemented together. We took a closer look and we saw that those cemented rocks were actually rounded. How do rocks become rounded? When you just break a rock, right? Oh, I heard someone say it, oh. When you just break a rock, right, it shatters into all these fragments. It requires water, tumbling, 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 to wear down the edges to form, to form these rounded rocks. So conglomerate is the name of the rock. And on Mars as well as Earth, they formed from water. So that was the first of the water discoveries, but it was not the last, because then we kept driving and we got to these light tone layers that we had seen from orbit and wanted to investigate. So we extended the rover arm out with its microscopic imager and chemical instruments, and we also drilled a hole, scooped up some material, and stuck it in the laboratory instruments that the rover carries in its belly. And when we did that, we found out a few things. We took a look down the hole, and we saw when we shot the hole with the laser, do you see these, um, these, these dots going down? Yeah, the drill didn't make that. The rover carries a laser that analyzes chemistry by shooting Mars materials at a distance of up to about seven meters away. So yes, we have a laser beam on Mars. <laughs> And it told us that this rock was, 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 was full of clay minerals, and you can actually see the veins of salt, right, from, from the lake waters that were once there evaporating. So there was an amazing water story, and it, and it showed that, that channels um, brought waters down off the crater rim. They ponded, tumbling, rounding rocks as they went, then ponded to form a lake. And we can all tell this as geologists just by looking at the shape and the composition of rocks. So having made those discoveries, which are pretty awesome, we still had our 15-kilometer journey ahead. And that's what we've been doing for most of the last year and a half, is trekking slowly. The rover goes slowly. The rover driving speed is like this. So it takes a while to get places. Um, and we've had a little bit of challenges along the way. So the rover wheels aren't supposed to have holes this big in them. Pointy rocks have been puncturing our wheels, and there's no AAA on Mars, so you have to preserve your wheels. And we've been adopting the strategy of driving on low sand, which is a lot safer, gentler on the wheels. So at last, though, this was only a few weeks ago, we made it to the base of Mount Sharp, and you can see the layered rocks stretching before us. We're working our way through them now, drilling to understand the chemistry. We've got about another three kilometers up the hill of climbing left to go. So pay attention to this journey. The rover is even now drilling, driving, drilling, driving. We asked earlier today, uh, what would you bring to Mars? Would you go to Mars? Well, we've already brought our curiosity to Mars. And it is a proxy for us as explorers until we can make it there one day ourselves. So thank you, and uh, follow along the rover's adventures. <laughs>